Okay, right. Um, okay, I'm just going to go through what I prepared and uh, hopefully that won't take too much time. Um, I, I did uh, cut out a, a few collaborations and, and, and so on that um, requires um, deep theorems about empirical processes and I mean, deep understanding about empirical processes. Um, for now, we're just focusing on some main parts, right? Um, okay, so um, let's remind ourselves what um, those things are. So um, what we have here is, um, so given uh, truth, Q of X model P X given W with W in some parameter space and um, I I D data um, D sub N from X one up to X N um, and uh, where each one of them is um, drawn from the truth and we are assuming, uh, for this talk, we are assuming realizability uh, throughout um, for some W in uh, W0. Um, the main thing we want to do is um, to study um, Kn, which is equal to That and as we discussed before, we should think of that as um, uh, normalized lot loss. Um, and the, the 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 whole proof should be we should have be, we should be able to push through the whole proof by replacing um, uh, that part with um, L N of W up um, if we are talking about uh, not non-realizable, essentially unique uh, case. Um, right. Um, but I haven't done that. So what part of the calories and, and stuff like that uh, fails to uh, go through uh, remains to be seen. Okay, so uh, throughout we will denote um, f of x w as uh, log of uh, this log likelihood ratio, right? And and therefore, um, K N of W is just um, the average over data of F. Okay, and we have um, so uh, let me state um, main theorem one in. Uh, as kind of an extension of um, existing, uh, existing result. So we have a law of large number uh, tell us that, well, for each W, for any W, um, Kn converges um, almost surely um, to its expectation of the F, that's expectation of X, um, which is equal to um, the familiar K of W function, right? And central limit theorem um, say that, well, this convergence, um, this point-wise point convergence um, um, has, is, is normally distributed. So for all W, but uh, we need this condition such that K of W is greater than epsilon, um, then if we normalize it properly, as with any central limit theorem uh, result, that converges in distribution to uh, normal uh, with mean zero and some uh, variance. The, the, the problem, the, the, the required thing for um, so the reason we require this this extra condition is that the expression for that um, variance at um, at the set w naught is equal to zero, and that's not a normal distribution and it's not undefined there. 
um, so uh, theorems from empirical processes um, by, say, Glivenko, um, Cantelli, and Donska, um, that actually says that um, so the above, both the above um, results um, hold uniformly. Well, for the first one, it holds uniformly everywhere. Um, uh, the for the second one, uh, it holds uniformly everywhere. Um, oops, uh, uniformly in uh, W. Uh, uniformly in W. Outside of some um, small W epsilon set, where W epsilon um, is equal to um, the set where W is less than or equal to um, that epsilon, where, where K is less than or equal to epsilon. Right. Um, so, and and this this immediately imply that um, if we uh, if we uh, normalize this expression, by this factor, and I, I'm I, so if someone wants to work with me to figure out what um, like uh, the ex, ex, exact expression of this uh, standard deviation and see that um, uh, I'm guessing that this is trying to divide out um, standard deviation uh, near uh, W0. OK. Um, uh, yep. And, and, and you, you will see that when we, when we prove the main formula one and uh, show that at, at W0, but it, it, in the pullback instead uh, in U0, um, uh, this, this, normal, this normalization, this denominator exactly make the uh, standard deviation a constant instead of something that depending on w um, near w zero. Uh, but for now we have that this thing, sorry, this um, this random variable converges um, in distribution to a Gaussian process um, uh, on uh, w but outside of uh, w epsilon. Right, but the thing is that's not what we want. What, what we want is to 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 get um to to get uh get a handle on the um, learning behavior near uh, near w zero, which is inside this w epsilon set. We want to be near, it, not bounded away from it. So um, let's go to the next board. Oops. So our goal um, is to show that we can reparameterize um, by introducing a new manifold and uh, a, a parameterization function like that, W G of U, such that under this reparameterization, re um, This psi um, random variable after reparameterization um, converges to a Gaussian process everywhere. Um, but in the in the in the newer larger space. Okay. Um, uh, by the way, I found a kind of a little historical historical remark um, in, so in remark 2.5 uh, in the gray book. Um, and it's, it, it might be indicative of how these things get discovered. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, the, the history seems to be, so Hironaka um, proved um, resolution and then um, and, and then Atia um, in 1970 um, uh, 
uh, wrote a paper, which is, uh, I think some of you might be uh, very familiar with, which is a division of distribution using resolution uh, paper. Uh, but Watanabe seems to read it as, um, so seems to read that paper as um, giving the result. If F is analytic, um, that implies that um, F G of U is equal to A of U, U to the K, um, where one on A of U, um, so A is, A has a reciprocal. Um, so, so this this follows very closely what uh, that the result that we want we will be proving uh, today. Um, but I, I I I read through this paper, but I would lo love to work through someone with uh, with someone to if someone know how to read that paper and get this conclusion, uh, I would very much like to know. Um, I think it's I think it's not in there. Is it not in there? <laughs> uh, well, not, not exactly the form we want, I think. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it's definitely not exactly the form we want because we are dealing with um, uh, sort of distribution valued um, analytic function, which, um, but I, I, I can't even find uh, results about like f of x analytic in there. So I'm not sure how he <laughs> read that read that way. I see. Um, uh, and also he claims that uh, this paper shows that um, a, a resolution on real analytic function has a complexification, uh, but then this paper actually just claimed that Hironaka has uh, already has a version, uh, already um, proved that it can be complexified and extend to uh, the whole complex plane. But um, uh, again, I, 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 Hironaka that paper is probably too, too, too large to um, fine, as that pin pinpoint exactly where these things are. Um, but then the complexification will be important, but probably not for us today. Um, we, we might get there today. Okay. Um, right. And, and then uh, Watanabe in, uh, in uh, I think the first paper was uh, 1999, um, uh, we, we get SLT. Um, in there. Um, but I think interestingly, uh, the, it's it's using the Bernstein Sato B function first and not via Formula One. Like Formula One is not explicitly proven, but uh, the, uh, but the the the, com the convergence property of Psi N uh, in the resolved space is 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 used implicitly. Right. Um, okay. Um, so let's Let's prove um, main formula one uh, carefully, and the way I'm going to do, do that is to uh, to 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 sort of build things out from uh, maybe maybe more on the uh, bottom out level, where um, I will state the assumption um, and I'm write, I will write assumption in red uh, as we use them, uh, just to 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 show where the assumptions are important. Right, because if you recall in the gray book, there is a whole fundamental condition, a series of uh, condition called fundamental condition ones, and and those things are assumed at different places. Um, okay, so um, let's okay, let's let's use this board. Let's keep using this board, and um, I'm going to state. Um, so let's, let's start from resolution of singularity. And I think this is, um, uh, this is the, um, theorem quoted as theorem 2.3 in the gray book. And I think it's the version, uh, sort of stated clearly and as explicated by Atiyah, um, in the, in his 1970 paper. So, um, theorem, uh, this is 2.3. Um, again, all of this is in the gray book. Um, so let k of w um, be, so I'm overloading the, 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 the k here. k of w is just any, for, for now in this theorem, is just any real analytic function um, defined 
in an in a open neighborhood of um, zero in R to the D, um, and um, K of zero um, is zero, and uh, K is non negative and non constant. So it's not zero somewhere. So it's uh, strictly positive somewhere. Um, then there exists a triple uh, W. Oh, maybe I should write U first. U, W, uh, G, where uh, G is a function uh, from U to W. Um, so W is um, um, uh, open neighborhood of zero in R to the D, uh, possibly smaller than where uh, K of W is strictly defined. Um, and U is a real analytic manifold uh, of D dimensional. Right, and G is proper uh, real analytic. Um, and, uh, and furthermore, G is uh, analytic isomorphism um, on one to one and on to um, away from the zero set of K and its pullback. Right. And the, the important thing for us is that um, pulling K back by G um, in every, uh, by G give us um, U to a 2K and G itself has Jacobian um, equal to, um, so K becomes normal crossing and the Jacobian is uh, normal crossing as well with B of U not equal, analytic and not equal to zero. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next board. Oops. So we want to um, apply the resolution um, to KW. Um, where we are, whoops, let me write it in the notation we have today. We want to apply, we want to apply it to this function, which means um, here we assume K is real analytic, right? And the fact that it is uh, non-negative non -negative follows from uh, properties of K. Um, and we are focusing on our neighborhood of W0, which is equal to the zero set of K. Right. Um, okay, so the idea is that we will be um, applying resolution on every point of W naught in W zero. So let me draw a picture. So that's W and then we have, uh, I'm using green for the good ones, for the good parameters, say something like that. Um, so, we will be for, for each point in there, we will get a triple W. Um, so U, W, and G, and the other point will get a U prime, W prime, uh, G prime, and, and, and so on. And then we are going to tile the whole, the whole W node. The green is the, the zero set of K, tile the whole W node with um, 
uh, the resolve uh, triple. Um, and then we will, here's where we assume uh, W is compact. Uh, and, and therefore W0 is compact as well because it is a closed set um, of a compact set. Um, but from the construction above, uh, we get, uh, so we have a, a, a set of triples of like W, uh, sorry, U, I, W, I, and G, I, which is the resolution triple we get from uh, the theorem. Um, because the, remember, recall the theorem uh, requires um, at the origin K of zero to be zero, K of W not to be zero. Um, so, and and this set, this set of W I is um, is an open cover uh, for W not, and by compactness we take a finite sub cover, um, say. W1 to WK. Um, and then we, uh, we uh, invoking uh, the, the gluing lemma for, um, for analytic uh, functions, uh, which I actually haven't seen uh, uh, a, a, a proof myself, but um, I've seen a proof for smooth functions. And I think it's, uh, it's not too different. And I think uh, people, uh, doing things from using shift theories and, and so on has a very slick proof of this. Um, okay, correct me if I'm wrong then. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, glue into a global resolution. So we just interpret these as charts. Um, uh, G, um, where M is now a d-dimensional real analy analytic manifold, uh, so it's resolving a, a neighborhood um, of um, of W zero and it's W epsilon and epsilon here is determined by um, the epsilon can be determined by um, looking at um, epsilon balls uh, within this finite sub cover. Right. Okay. Um, okay, and, 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 and then we have um, in local charts, so every point in, uh, in, in W0, um, we can, we, that there is a w, uh, WI up there, such that um, KG of U is equal to U to the 2K. Okay, right. Um, okay, next, let me squeeze it down here. Next, we are going to assume, um, so this is another assumption, assume that this F function is uh, LSQ, where Q is the, uh, uh, is a measure on uh, R to the D, uh, defined by the truth density, the density of the true distribution. Um, LSQ valued um, analytic function. Um, uh, on W epsilon, um, and where, where S is um, greater than or equal to. Um, where, Um, so, so LSQ is the, uh, the, the space of Banach function, uh, sorry, the, is a Banach space of functions um, under the uh, S norm, um, the LS norm. Um, specifically, this means that, let me write, go to the next board, what this means. Okay, so this means that 
for any uh, w in, uh, okay, I'm introducing new notation, w epsilon uh, superscript r, and this is um, an open set. Um, in R to the D um, containing uh, W um, epsilon. Okay, let me draw a picture. So if we can somehow think of a line as, uh, as D-dimensional, R to the D, um, if you're uncomfortable with that, just think of D as one. Um, we, have, um, we have a subset um, which is which which we which we assume to be compact, which is W. By the way, the compactness assumption here, um, there is a remark that say that we can, uh, if we can prove that when the parameter is uh, at infinity, uh, it's not a uh, it's not an analytic singularity of F. So it's like F uh, F still remains holomorphic or remains real analytic at infinity. Uh, then we can just consider the projective space, um, RP, uh, d-dimensional projective, sp real projective space. Um, uh, so, uh, but otherwise we will have to just choose a large enough, in practice, we just choose a large enough uh, set in R to the D um, and close it there. Right, um, so, so that's the compact W um, and then we have our uh, w0, the zero set of k is there. And we were considering uh, a compact set around it, which is w epsilon, uh, with non-empty interior, by the way. Um, and now we are saying that because uh, because the, the, the property of being real analytic is defined by a converging power series with, uh, with a radius of convergence. So it's actually a sort of an open uh, condition. So there is a W epsilon to the R, an open set um, containing W epsilon um, there. Um, so that, um, so that everywhere in that set, um, we can, um, okay, let me, let me make that constant so that we, we have W is equal to um, sum over, so, and, and that's W, uh, the, the F function is uh, represented by a converging power series uh, uh, indexed by um, N to the D. So the alphas are multi-indices. Um, w minus W naught uh, to the power of alpha. And, and we are using multi-index notation everywhere. And this is um, absolutely Convergent um, in some neighborhood of W naught um, n. Uh, these a alpha functions are L S Q uh, functions. Okay. So the next come the main lemma. Like it, it should be a theorem by itself. Um, it's called, it's theorem 6.1 in the gray book. Um, it's saying that under the reparameterization W equal to G of U, um, we can divide this uh, function F, which which if we recall is the normalization we want in uh, the psi uh, function. Uh, and, and this this remains um, analytic uh, after division. It's, it's not, so, okay. Uh, sorry, that's, that's uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't write that. Um, that's a terrible statement. So th that's kind of how I think about it. But what, what I should say is, um, is that we want to show that um, if we define AXU as um, the division after reparameterization, re um, but recall that uh, um, KG 
um, the pullback of k by g of u is u to the 2k, and the square root of that is just u to the k. Um, so we get. Uh, we want to show that this um, is uh, analytic. Okay. Their right. function so, isn't fine, right? You want to say that, I mean, it isn't the easiest form to understand. This is clearly what it sort of says, but in the formal statement, you want to say that there exists an A such that F is equal to U to the KA, right? Um, I mean, I guess that's uh, how you can interpret saying it's analytic. <laughs> but I mean, both f of, f of x, g of u, uh, so so the f function exists and then u to the k exists. So I'm thinking about dividing. Well, the thing is that, yeah, I guess this is maybe a, not an uncommon thing to write in math, but that, that ratio, as literally interpreted as a function, you'd have to evaluate the numerator and denominator uh, and then... I, I see. So that's, okay, that, so that expression is not a well-defined function at zero. Now, of course, we know what yep. you mean is that you you can divide it and then, like, as a function, and then evaluate that 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 result. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that's uh, that's the proper way to say say that in uh, complex analysis. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, yep, I, I see what I mean. So, so sign sign z on z is not defined at at zero until you define it. Um, right. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the correction. Yes, that's that's what I should mean. So, so um, maybe that's not a definition. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, there exists. So the proper statement would be there. There exists uh, a real analytic a x u such that um, f is equal to a x u times u to the k. Right. Um, okay. So um, let's go ahead and prove this. Um, uh, right. By the way, these this expression are all in local charts. Um, so um, we know that in local chart, G of U, by the fact that it is uh, real analytic, can be expanded um, as a real analytic function centered um, uh, center at uh, W0 um, to give um, that. So it's a power series in U now after com uh, composition with G um, uh, because G itself is uh, real analytic. Um, so the composition of real analytic with uh, function with Reality function is again reality, so we get the power series expansion. Um, right, and we will write this in two ways. Uh, uh, sorry, or we will we'll factor this into two terms. One term is equal to um, where the the indices are uh, recall that we, we want to um, sort of morally divide this by u to the k right so we want to factor out u to the k out here so we will look at indices that can be divided by multi indices that can be divided by u to the k um, without them going negative so this is uh, so this is saying um, alpha i is greater than or equal to ki um, for all i in the multi-index. Multi so none of the division uh, give you one over u to the something. Um, so that gives us um, a series of functions, um, u to the alpha minus k, where none of this is negative, um, times u to the k, uh, plus another term, which is everything else. So alpha less than k, um, a alpha, x u to the alpha minus k u to the k um, right and we will call um, we will call this term here um, a x u which is um, the existence of an analytic function that we want that's clearly analytic um, 
because those are all positive powers. And we'll call that uh, BXU. And uh, now our goal is to show that uh, BXU is identically zero. So that non-analytic part is uh, uh, banish. Okay. Let's go back to the first. Board. Okay, uh, we will do that by observing, by making the following observation. And I think uh, we are familiar with this trick from last week. So we know that um, at, in local coordinates, we have um, user the two gay is kg of u, um, which is equal to, by definition, this integral right and by a trick that might be familiar to us now we this is equal to um, e to the negative f um, x g of u um, plus f x g of u minus one q of x x um, just to remind ourselves this term because fx g of u is um is equal to log of um q of x divided by p and um e to the negative that uh, give us p x g of u um over q of x okay and that q of x cancel with that q of x and p p x g of u x uh is a density in uh, of x and that integrates to one and Q of x multiplied by one integrates to one and those cancel and we recover the original expression. So those two expressions are equal. And um, and that's equal to um, another integral. Um, it's equal to f square over two uh, times e to the negative t f g of u q of x dx for some um, t between zero and one. And that's from uh, uh, Taylor expansion with uh, Lagrange type remainder. So that's using, um, so e to the negative f can, uh, can be Taylor expand into uh, one minus f. Uh, so second order mean value theorem with Lagrange uh, remainder says that that's equal to the second derivative evaluated at some alpha. So the second derivative is um, it is e to the, is negative. Wait, is it positive? Yep, it's um, it's positive positive e to the x and evaluated at some alpha where alpha is between um, zero and uh, the um, the the argument um, of the series. Um, on two factorial um, times um, f squared. So we are expanding around zero. Um, right, so if we set alpha equal to t times f, then this is saying that alpha, uh, sorry, that's, this is saying that uh, this condition turns into t is between zero and one. Okay, and therefore e to the negative f minus one plus f um, is equal to um, f squared on two times e to the negative t f. And that's how we get the expression we have both. Right. Um, so dividing both sides by u to the 2k um, Yeah, so I, I think um, we have to so for u to the 2k not equal to zero, um, we divide both sides by u to the 2k, we get um, uh, we get one um, is equal to um, a half times f x g of u divided by u to the k um, o squared. So u to the two k is absorbed in that. Um, e to the negative t f x g of u q of x dx. Um, 
and then we are going to restrict um, integration region. So the goal is to, um, so previously we have an expression for, 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 for this, right? So we have expressed f of x in two terms times u to the k, and then u to the k can be divided out. So this, this here, this here is equal to axu plus um, bxu. Um, and we want, we, we want a bound somehow that says that bxu is equal to zero. So we want to uh, remove the influence of this term um, and we use, do that by an inequality. So that's equal, that's greater than, so we shrink an, the integration region. So choose an L. Um, so, so for arbitrary L, define um, the, a, a smaller integration region, which is um, X where the supremum over U of um, f of x g of u um, is less than or equal to l right so um, so first first notice that every everything in the integrand is positive and therefore restricting to a smaller domain uh, makes things uh, smaller um, and then uh, notice that um, this term can be made smaller if we make um, that us the the exponent adds uh, the negative the exponent um, so make t and f as large as possible so we will re so in this integration domain it's the, the largest possible value for f is l um and uh the largest pos pos possible uh value for t is uh one as we said above so this is greater than or equal to um um a x u plus b x u squared times e to the negative l um, q of x dx. Okay, uh, next board. Um, so let, let me rewrite what we have so far. We have um, integral axu plus bxu or square q of x dx and moving everything to the other side. This is bounded both by 2e to the l, right? Um, but we have that this integral um, uh, I don't need to rewrite this, but this integral is also bounded uh, below by uh, this expression. Um, maybe I'll write it in. Let me write this way. Sorry, I forgot the integration region, which have, which has now changed. Um, so this in this inequality comes from um, noting that, um, well, the difference between the uh, both sides of the inequality is um, something like a plus b square, so minus a half b square plus a square, and if we do the algebra, we get uh, this is equal to two um, a square plus a b plus a quarter b square, uh, which is equal to two times um, a plus a half b o squared. Uh, so this is um, because it's a, it's a squared value, so it's uh, always greater than zero. So um, this thing is greater than negative um, that thing. So that uh, a plus b square is greater than half b squared minus a squared. That's where this comes from. Um, and this is greater than, um, uh, so it seems axu is always um, positive. Um, axu squared is always positive. This is greater than 
um, half dx u square q of x dx. Um, And, and then we have um, almost arrived at a contradiction if, so recall that dxu is, um, is equal to the sum of a alpha u and, sorry, a alpha x and u to the alpha minus k, where we know that these terms um, all have um, uh, some one over ui to the alpha r ki minus alpha i, where this is um, positive. And which means that um, if um, bxu is not identically zero, meaning like these terms, uh, the, AX, uh, the a alpha x in, in this series, where alpha is less than k, are not all zero, uh, then um, as uh, u, goes to zero um, as we get closer and closer to the um, origin um, uh, bxu um, square uh, goes to infinity um, and and therefore cannot be bounded by uh, 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 bounded both by 2e to the l okay so that's the contradiction we need to show that. So that's a contradiction. Um, and we we have shown that. So uh, the x u is equal to wait, 0 for Die. Yeah. <laughs> we can't play Malaysian internet anymore. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, he found a contradiction and vanished. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. It's a cosmic censorship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember being a bit unsure about this gluing of resolution and stuff. I'll have to ask Edmund about it. It uh, seems like the compactness uh, uh, hypothesis does it for us, right? I mean, we were, you were, I think you were worried about it being uh, potentially gluing infinitely many patches together. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, well, it's. Hmm. Not exactly. Well, it's not obvious that you can do this, right? Uh, I don't know. This maybe it's an elementary technique, but I don't know that I. I mean, these resolutions on these different open sets, they could be. I mean, there's more than one resolution, right? So it's not like you take the unique resolution. So you pick a resolution. Yeah. And then there are there are overlaps that you have to take care of in order to glue those functions into a single function. And then you have to check that function remains analytic and, and so on. It's, mm, actually, yeah. you're right. Yeah, so maybe it's not just the finiteness of the patches thing. Hmm. I think there's something going on there. Maybe it is a standard thing. It's just not something that I know. Yeah, I never think about yeah. this, right? I guess in algebraic geometry, um, you know, not, not over reals. Not analytic geometry. Uh, this this is not not a, not a problem. Well, yeah. Why why does this sort of not come up? Um, I mean, usually we we don't construct it in that way of gluing, right? We do it sequentially. Uh, in, that's right. That's what. It, right. Yeah. Exactly. So and then we just maybe we could do the same here, right? You yeah, resolve yeah. one patch. I mean, but that's that's just going through like I mean, there's an algorithm to 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 do this, right? right. And uh, the algorithm is sequential, and you will get a resolution, whatever that happens to be. 
um, yeah, why is it that we don't we don't just take that approach here? I have a feeling it's just that Watanabe couldn't find the right thing to cite in the literature because right, it's right, right. maybe the exact thing he wants to cite is well, it certainly isn't in Hiranaka's paper. It's maybe implicit there. Mm. So maybe. I think there's actually kind of a gap in his book where he, he only talks about the local resolutions. Mm. Uh, he, well, do you even really need the global resolution? You could just say that I'm going to treat one point of W zero at a time, do this asymptotic expansion and then be like, well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. The RLCT doesn't require a global resolution, right? I mean, all of, whenever you write down coordinates, the way that we do with uh, these monomials, you've chosen a, you've chosen some coordinate system and that's, that's local, right? You're not, that won't work on some other far away point necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Yeah. Is that is it going back? <laughs> yeah, they got back in, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> they both got kicked and then had trouble rejoining. Maybe it's Roblox. I think it must be, yeah. Mm. Hey, guys. Hello. Uh, that Hello. was fun. <laughs> and I have like a similar internet connection or something. <laughs> um, well, it happened to Matt as well, so it seems like it's Roblox's fault. Right, yeah. Um, the, the Roblox has, was, was slow when I tried to rejoin, like the entire app is slow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no um, that's, that's not your fault. <laughs> that's, not, that's nothing you can do. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, please continue, I guess. Right, so the punchline is, okay, F, we, we, uh, F, G, F, X, G of U is equal to A, X, U as defined at both. Um, u to the k um, locally uh, and uh, in, in locally in, in in any local chart and in at any point in m. Uh, okay, uh, okay, that's that's the, the main thing to to prove main theorem one. Uh, Dan, do you want me to continue with the, the few calories um, following this? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, if you're ready. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. So um, uh, maybe. Yep. Sorry to bug you, but maybe reattach a speaker so the orb follows. Uh, yep, of course. Okay. Um, um, okay, this is the board with a lot of assumptions written on it, but um, let, let, let us retain that board. Let's go to the next board. So that's <laughs> uh, so that we, we retain all the assumptions. Okay. Uh, I'm at the fourth board. Okay, so uh, a corollary. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it's corollary, but um, wait. Uh, okay, so there's a first and important corollary, which is um, the expectation um, over x. So that's over the the, the true distribution of that function that we just defined is uh, u to the k. And that's not hard to prove um, because we know that u to the 2k is equal to k g of u, um, which by definition is that integral involving f. Um, but we have just proven that f can be factored can has can have a factor of u to the k factored out, um, and if we just cancel u to the k on both sides because that doesn't depend on x, which is the integration variable, we get u to the k is equal to um, q of x, a x u, t x, which is equal to the expectation, which is just the expectation of x at each point u. Okay. Um, and that allows us to pro prove our main theorem one, um, which is saying in uh, local chart 
as we have constructed above u of the pull-up space of, of the resolve space, um, the quantity that we want to study, which is the fluctuation of the learning process, is equal to this expression. Where uh, C n of u is an empirical process defined on O of n, um, the resolve space. So minus so uh, C n is uh, written as an uh, as a empirical process and uh, usually have the form of a function applied on um, the data set, which are IID, are drawn from the same distribution, uh, minus its expectation. But we know that the expectation of u uh, of a x u is u to the k. Right. Um, and this is the proof. Um, is perhaps uh, just a combination of the things that we have done before. And just notice that um, if we multiply uh, root n u to the k by cn, so multiply the um, expression below, we get, well, that becomes one on n. And then if we put u to the k into, multiply u to k into the sum, we get u to the k minus u to the 2k, and that's f x i of u, and therefore that part of the sum becomes um, k n g of u. Well, that part of the sum becomes, oh, it becomes n times u to the 2k divided by 1 on n, so that part of the sum becomes k g of u, which is equal to u to the 2k and we recover the expression that we want. OK. Uh, okay. There is perhaps, um, let's go back to the first board and talk about the, the empirical process itself now. So, um, so another corollary is that um, the, the expectation, and this is the expectation over dn, so over the entire data set of x1 up to xn, because um, cn, um, the expression in there, depends on a sum of um, over, depends on the average over all the data set, uh, all the data in the data set, and uh, this mean um, is equal to um, zero. And uh, I think in the stochastic process literature, this is called the correlation function. Uh, I must say I'm not very familiar <laughs> with that. Um, so, and, and it's, so um, it's a correlation of this empirical process um, is equal to, I, I think they usually express this as a kernel, something like that. So, but uh, this, is but this, mm -hmm. this is also expectation over dn. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Expectation over dn. Um, and it's equal to the expectation over x of um, a x u, a x v. Uh, let me put my bracket carefully. Um, times u to the k, v to the k. Um, proof. Um, okay, the, the proof of the first part is uh, not too hard. Um, so expectation over dn uh, of c n of u. So if we just use the expression we have before, so we have uh, one on root n, and then uh, expectation is linear, so we just push it into uh, the sum. We get expectation over dn of um, a x i uh, u. Uh, minus, um, well, expectation of something constant is just the constant itself. So that's u to the k. Um, let me 
make my brackets clear. Okay, and and this this excitation here, um, so this this variable only depends on the x i in the in the d n. So all the other expectation is just a, a a constant one, and this reduced to e x of so e x i of a x i u, but e x i is i i d x, right? Uh, so so uh, uh, this is equal to e x a x u, and it's independent of the summation variable. Um, so so and we have proven that this is u to the k. So u to the k cancel with u to the k, and this is just zero. So done, first part. OK, second part, um, expectation over dn of uh, cn u cn v is equal to, again, we'll, we are going to, uh, OK, we're going to multiply out this expression um, and then push through the expectation by linearity, we get um, so the one on root n become one on n, and uh, we get a double sum i equal to one to n, j equal to one to n of uh, of expectation. Um, uh, okay, let me be careful about that. Again, using the same uh, reasoning, um, uh, uh, the expectation over the data set reduced to expectation um, by RID assumption, re reduced to expectation over each individual um, uh, observation. A, X, I, U, and multiplied by the expectation over X, J of A, X, J, V, um, and then uh, minus expectation over x i a x i u. So recall that um, there is a uh, so so there will be this term multiplied by v to the k, and then the same term but multiplied by u to the k when we multiply out the the expression. So the j is always with v. So that's with x j, and then um, minus uh, u to the k, v to the k. Okay, the summation is over the whole thing here. Okay, so um, looking at the first term here, um, all all the cross term where i is not equal to j will cancel with um, some some version of of this one. So um, so so again, so so the u terms here, this becomes u to the k, and this becomes v to the k, and then uh, when uh, there is exactly um, n number of these things uh, that cancel with um, uh, that cancel with the cross terms in here, and uh, same for that one. So all the cross terms cancel is one thing. So um, and and the non cross term there is exactly n of those, um, and they are all equal to so i is equal to j. Um, uh, uh, so so when, when i i is equal to j, we can uh, again by by the independence assumption we can absorb them into um, the same expectation. So that's equal to one on n. So reduce down to the old cross term cancel. We only got one sum um, is equal to expectation over v minus u to the k v to the k. Um, still in here, um, and nothing in here depends on the um, summation variable. And there's a one on n out there. So uh, that's equal to the expression that we want. Sorry, I might be hand waving a bit with the accounting of the cross term. Okay. Um, all right. So I, I think 
um, I think I might, I might stop there in terms of query. Uh, uh, unless people want me to, uh, maybe we should go into the working session. But I, I want to comment on, uh, on the assumption a little bit. So we have only as assumed that W is compact, uh, K is analytic, um, F X W is is real analytic, um, in uh real analytic in, uh, in the open neighborhood of uh, W0. Um, if we want to push further, um, so first of all, we, we, we claim that this E, that this psi N of U um, uh, empirical process, it, it is defined over all of um, M, um, but we want to show that this uh, uh, converge the Gaussian process on all of the res resolved space. Um, and uh, 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 the, the next theorem we should prove is to is to show that at the pullback of W zero, um, the variance this covariance um, function at um, at, at U zero is is well defined. It's it's not like uh, pre previously where we 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 have to be bounded away from it. And for that, um, the gray book assumed that f x of W is not just real analytic, but it's it, it can be complexified, meaning the meaning the uh, power series. You can substitute a complex variable into the power series, and um, um, and then that is that is holomorphic um, as a function in C to the D uh, in a complex D-dimensional space. Um, it's saying that the, the Green Book kind of papers over this, or does does it not need this hypothesis? It seems like. In the green book, there's no mention of this real versus complex and extending functions to C and so. Um, I, I think the green book doesn't even mention like it, it quotes this as as a as a theorem like from it quotes paper, isn't it? Like that's what. That's what yeah, because it always struck. I mean, I don't. Uh, to be honest, I for example, never check that 10 H networks actually satisfy these conditions, right? I mean, probably it's not difficult. He never, uh, Watanabe, when in his examples, never really shows how to check these more technical conditions. I assume it's okay, but I didn't check. seems By like way, it could be you, in principle kind of Do you want me to, to check. continue with the next theorem to, to see exactly how that is used? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I was going to say anyway that uh, I think maybe we can just skip the working session today. Um, so um, uh, I think maybe you should just finish off what you're saying and, and go on. Yeah. If, okay. If, what do you think, Ken? Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, let's... Okay, cool. Okay. Sorry to hijack the whole session. <laughs> no, um... no, no. It's not like, a, not like we will uh, keel over and die if we don't get our fix of working session. Right. Okay, I'm going to continue with um, uh, theorem 6.3. I'm skipping theorem 6.2 um, so, uh, because, okay, uh, so basically I'm, I'm isolating assumptions here and, and theorem 6.3, at least part of it, the, the part that doesn't involve um, taking n to infinity and converge with Gaussian process um, requires the complexification assumption. Okay, uh, let, 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 me, let me do that. So um, theorem 6.3, um, so um, okay, uh, as, assuming what we have assumed uh, just before this, and I'm, uh, uh, we are going to claim that, um, sorry, um, at, uh, let me, Use this notation. Um, at u zero, which is the pullback of the zero set of k, we have that the variance um, of um, of the empirical process. Is equal to two. It's a constant. So, so that's kind of what the uh, that, that's kind of the answer to the question we have before, where we have an empir empirical process, but it's not defined where the zero set is. But in the resolved space, um, 
uh, it is defined and it is uh, after the, the that that is why we introduced the um, that factor after that um, factor normalization by that factor we get a constant um, value for standard deviation or for variance okay so proof um, using the corollary we have before this is um, uh, the same as checking that the expectation of x of a x u square uh, so recall that we have uh, uh, this expression uh, so c n u uh, c n of v is equal to x u times x v minus u to the k v to the k but uh, sorry minus u to k v to the k but that's zero at in this set um, and and v is equal to u um, so we get um, uh, uh, we get this expression. We want to check that this is equal to 2. So to show that, whoops. Okay. Um, so f x, by the way, I can't access my note mm, at the moment because it's on my iPad and if I quit Roblox, um, uh, I would get disconnected. So I'm based, I'm going off in memory, memory here. <laughs> okay, so uh, FG of U, as we have uh, seen before, locally in uh, the coordinate charts, it's equal to this expression. Um, and here is where we assume that not only is, um, uh, so, So not only is fx uh, w a real analytic function on r to the d, um, so this is the picture we have before, right? So that's r to the d, and this is our compact w, and our um, w naught is in there, and it's, uh, it's surrounded by uh, w epsilon, which is a compact set, but it's, re it's really real analytic in this w r uh, epsilon. And what we're doing, what, what we're doing now is to extend um, everything into uh, into into C to the D. So um, we're saying that there is an open set um, in C to the D containing uh, W, which is that's W C, and then um, uh, and then F fx of w is uh, holomorphic, meaning complex analytic in w epsilon c, uh, containing the, the, the real part, w uh, epsilon in r. Uh, these are all open sets. OK. Um, and here and, and here is where the uh, complexified, so um, as Atiyah mentioned and Watanabe quote, um, that once we find a resolution map uh, for the real analytic function, it can be complexified to resolve um, uh, in, in C to the D. Uh, I don't know how the, the, the details of how that work, but um, what, what we, the, it, what Watanabe, how Watanabe use it is just to say that in local coordinates, now you uh, now these are complex <laughs> variables. <laughs> that's 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 it. <laughs> that's that's how that's the upshot of um, this whole construction. Um, and the main point here is that once we have this, we can use Cauchy integral formula um, because to to get an expression for to get an expression for what this a alpha, um, that's not u, that's x, what this a alpha x um, are, because by Cauchy integral formula um, in the uh, in the multivariable version, this is equal to one to the two pi i, so i is the um, square root of unit square root of negative one to the d, because there is um, that's the multivariate Cauchy integral formula version. Um, it's equal to the closed control integral um, 
uh, where the control are C1, uh, circular control, C1 up to CD, with uh, each one of them has radius, um, say R1 up to Rd, where the, this, this, this control are strictly in the radius of convergence um, of F. And, and then we just write down Cauchy integral formula. Uh, Z divided by Z minus um, uh, uh, hmm. Okay. I should I should I should write like we are expanding uh, near W zero and let me write the version for uh, W zero first. So that's W minus W zero to the alpha. So Z, that's Z minus W zero to the alpha again uh, alpha plus one meaning plus one in every coordinate. Uh, in every multi-index. Uh, again, multi-index annotation is in um, is in use here. That's uh, multiplied by dz1 up to dzd. Okay. Um, and then what we need is to uh, bound this a alpha x. So by triangle inequality, this is equal to 1 over 2 pi uh, to the d. Um, the i just disappeared because of absolute value. Um, integral, um, I'm just going to write a C there um, of f z um, over, um, well, that's the z minus w alpha plus one. But recall that this, that's dz. Uh, recall that these are circular control, so Z minus, um, by the way, circular control center at um, W. By the way, the, these are, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Cartesian products of circular controls. So each of these uh, is equal to, uh, you know, our I to the alpha I plus one. Um, that's equal to, well, the, the modulus is equal to that. So um, uh, again, so in multi-index notation, that's R to the alpha plus one. Okay. Um, and then uh, we can use another inequality in the same direction to take this in suit of Z inside the control. Um, and therefore, now this is uh, independent of the integration variable, so we can pull up the front. So this is equal to um, one. Um, okay, I'm going to use the notation what I'm going to use. That's equal to m of x, where m of x is equal to sup. Um, let me be careful and make it uh, inequality as well. Because this is soup over the, uh, the, the the contour, but I'm going to take the soup over a larger domain and and call that m of x. Um, that's equal to soup over um, z. But now in this in in this uh, in this larger domain where f x z is all defined, w epsilon c uh, in the complex domain of modulus of f x. Z um, okay over two pi to the d, and then there's an integration um, uh, dz over c, but then uh, all the integration are um, like that. But then these integration is uh, exactly equal to r because it's just the length of each contour and each contour is, oh, sorry, each contour is two pi times r. So this is two pi to the d times r. Two pi to the d cancel with two pi d. r cancel with the, the plus one. So this is all less than or equal to mx over r to the alpha. Okay. Um, Let's go to the next board, uh, hopefully. 
uh, so let me add with red that. So assume uh, fxw holomorphic in here. Okay. And let's let's walk to the last ball because I'm going to retain all the red uh, uh, in the board. Uh, 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 that. Okay. Um, okay. So um, what was our goal again? Our goal is to prove that um, that the expectation of x over a x u squared is 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 constant. So, um, so we want to get a grip on uh, this integral, right? We want to show that this is equal to two. Um, the, the, the way we are going to do this is to show that, um, uh, is to show that in a neighborhood of, uh, so at u zero, um, everywhere in u zero, for all u in u zero, and the way we're going to show do do this is to um, uh, show that it is uh, it is equal to two um, in uh, away from u zero, but arbitrarily close to it, and then use uh, dominator convergence to show that it is uh, the same thing at the limit at the limit. Um, okay. So we have an expression for x u from before, um, which is alpha greater than or equal to k of um, a alpha x u to the alpha minus k. Um, um, so from the constructions that we, from the bound we have on uh, a alpha x, we have by the triangle inequality, um, again, uh, mod a x u is less than or equal to um, uh, m x um, r to the alpha, where r is uh, less than the radius of convergence um, uh, of um, uh, of of f, and uh, we can just take u to be the uh, to be uh, right. To, so um, take the mod u to be less than or equal to um, r, where r is just the largest domain uh, in the local charts that we are uh, uh, looking at at the moment. So that's r to the alpha. So yes, minus k alpha minus k. Um, the, the, the point is that uh, modulus of u we can uh, is, is bounded right and then um, and then that's less than or equal to um, uh, mx divided by r to the k um, times some constant c so everything else just sum to some constant Am I missing? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the 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 fact that we are close to um uh, we are close to u zero is important here. Meaning u uh u u is as small as we want to, right? And and so that this uh this thing. So we are summing alpha multi indices um infinite number of multi indices, but uh, all the r's are less than uh less than one. So uh. So we can invoke geometric series um, in each component and sum it to something finite. Okay. Um, okay. So again, as before, um, we will we will arrive at this expression above um, via the same trick, which gives us. It's the same trick in the proof of main theorem 6.1, which give us um, this expression, um, e to the negative t times a x u 
u to the k. So it's the same um, uh, same expression as we arrived at uh, before, um, except we have substituted the fact that f x uh, g of u is equal to a x u times u to the k, um, where t is between zero and one, uh, and and is a constant. Um, right, so, um, and recall that, is, so, uh, recall that we have divided u to the k on both sides in here, right? So there was a u to the k in here, and then we have divided out, and that's, that, that require u to the k not equal to zero. So we are, we are not on u, u naught, but um, we can be arbitrarily close to it. Um, and then we will, uh, uh, next thing we would do is to uh, do a dominated convergence uh, argument on uh, the integrand. So the dominated convergence theorem say that if the uh, integrand is bounded by some uh, function uh, and by, by some integrable function, then um, the, uh, then we can take the limit uh, inside. Okay, so the integrand um, is, uh, this integrand is less than or equal to um, by the bound we have above here, less than or equal to C mx over, sorry, ms square over r to the 2k because of the square here um, uh, times the maximum um, of um, either one or this expression here. Um, times q u to x here. All right, and um, okay, and recall that this is just um, f x g of u. Um, and we are away from u naught at the moment. So uh, because g is an analytic isomorphism, so this reduce down to an analytic isomorphism uh, away from the zero set. So we can talk about um, uh, the maximum over w here. Um, uh, of qx and pxw. Um, Um, and so, so this is, um, uh, and this function here, um, this is the assumption. The assumption is that, um, this is the, 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 the final assumption in fundamental condition one, which is that this, this expression here, um, so, okay, assumption, assume integral mx square, uh, and then the, uh, I guess, supreme over w of, um, uh, of, so that's, pxw uh, dx is uh, integrable. So that's less than infinity. I'm not sure how to get from this maximum over two things to, to that. I know that one of them does not depend on w, but that's the, that's the final assumption. Um, and, and then dominated convergence theorem um, uh, uh, just so if 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 this is integrable, then we can take the limit. We can take the limit as u to the k to zero into the integral, and and that term disappear because uh, to disappear to one, um, and then that that is that becomes the uh, that 
the, the whole thing becomes the integral we want, except the two can get pulled to the, the other side, and then we get the integral that we want above. That's how we bring home this theorem. Um, sorry, I'm a bit stuck on going from there to there. But I guess you, if you, uh, we can always just take this as the assumption <laughs> that, that that thing is integrable. Uh, sorry, I had to rejoin because I, my audio stopped working, but could you, uh, what was what was the story behind this? Yeah, I was also wondering about this, this hypothesis with the MX squared. I guess this is where it yep. gets used, but I didn't follow how. Was that the thing yeah. you just said you? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you disconnected because I, I was fumbling in the last couple of minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what happened is, uh, okay, let me, okay, let me, let me, let me clean this whole board up. Um, and and say this again, right? So, um, uh, but let's 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 recall this this assumption, and I'm going to clean it up and say again. Uh, sorry to ask you to elaborate on something and then warn you about the time, but uh, I've got to I've got to go to the next session in four minutes, so maybe it would be a good okay. idea wrap up and okay. we can leave that for another time yep yep let me let me make this quick so we have um we we have this um so for u to the k not equal to zero uh we, we will use the same trick as before to um to introduce this um uh function uh q of x um dx um, and then uh, the idea is to um, so this is this is uh, for, for for outside of the zero set and the idea is that we, we're going to use the big dominator convergence theorem to to take the limit as u to the k goes to zero um, uh, we can do that point wise and construct a sequence um, into into that set if, if we are, are concerned about this kind of uh, expression but um, the idea is that once we can show that this integrand is bounded above by something integrable, then taking the limit into it, uh, give us, uh, cancel out this mm. term to one. Um, so, so that's, that's the whole, that's the whole point. And, and then we recover, we recover uh, the expression of both. And um, mm. the, the, that condition, um, the MS square condition comes from the fact that we, we have constructed bound before where AXU right. is less than or equal to uh, some constant time x, so this is mx squared times r to the 2 alpha. Um, uh, and then this thing is bounded by um, supremum over w. And, and here it, he, he's invoking the fact that g is an analytic isomorphism away from uh, the zero set. Hence, we can reduce things down to expression in w. And uh, so, so this is the expression we want. And then the assumption is that this this integrand is integrable. Uh, I see. Um, and then dominated convergence theorem go through, and then we uh, we we obtain the theorem above. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Sorry. Thanks, I, Edmund. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was really, that was uh, yeah, that was great. Any quick questions, yeah. Kenneth, Matt? 